So my name is Jeffrey Seriati, and I'm a postdoc at Mike Gilson's lab. And today I'll be talking about tuning potential functions to host guest binding data. Maybe you have to click it first. Okay, no, no, we're good. So just a brief outline. Of what... I have to be louder. I'll try. Um, so just a, uh, is that good? Yeah, it's just uh, the outline of my talk. So I'll just give a some background and, and motivation for this project. And I'll show uh, results about optimizing the uh, parameters to host guest binding, uh, following uh, followed by the benchmark to protein ligand binding and hydration free energies. And lastly, I'll show the results of uh, what happens when we try to optimize to both hydration free energies and host guest binding. Okay, so just a little background. I think this is what we want. We want a force field that can describe protein ligand binding accurately. This is the holy grail for what we would want to do uh, in the application of, but not limited to computer-aided drug design. Um, so most <coughs> a force fields a fitted to QM data, especially for the valence parameters, but there's been recent efforts to uh, optimize them to physical data directly. So for example, uh, small molecule crystals and liquid state products. So for example, uh, SAGE 2.0.0 was um, had the nanogenes refitted to condensed phase uh, mixture data. So <clears throat> for this project, the question is, uh, why don't we target binding data directly? So uh, um, the, the, the aim of this project is to um, target host gas binding instead of protein again. So we, we use host gas system as a surrogate for protein ligand systems. And as a case study, uh, we'll optimize an implicit solvent uh, model. So just some background about host gas systems, why are they useful? The obvious reason is uh, it's smaller than a protein ligand system. Um, so <clears throat> there are some similar chemistries uh, involved in post gas binding. Uh, the bindings uh, affinities are comparable to protein again, and some are even um, uh, a tighter binder. And they they are less ambiguous in terms of uh, like protonation states. So we, we know them uh, in the protonation states of this host, and they've been used in sample blind challenges uh, as a test of force field and a test of methods. Okay, so just a. Uh, Give you a little background about the infrastructure. This is my rendering. I hope I do justice to it. So this is in courtesy to Simon Boothroyd, who did a lot of the, uh, the heavy lifting here. So our main, main uh, uh, program is the Open FF Evaluator. So the Evaluator will, uh, given a force field, it can estimate certain properties. So the one we had was used for Sage is uh, to estimate densities and the mixing. Uh, which takes in data from the NIST thermal ML database. But evaluator can also estimate two other properties uh, that depends on um, external softwares. So the first one is um, hydration free energies, uh, which depends on YAC and takes in uh, data from the free salt database. If I'm not mistaken, there are about 650 small molecules in free salt. Um, and the other one is host gas binding that depends on paprika. It takes in data from the taproom database. And I'll explain that um, in the next few slides. <laughs> so once we have uh, our est uh, properties estimated and the reference data, we feed that into force balance and force balance uh, gives us the optimized uh, parameters. Okay, so just a little background about the host gas binding. We estimated the uh, absolute binding for energy using the attached pool release method. So this method is developed in the Gilson lab. Um, and as the name suggests, uh, we attach a bunch of restraints to the host and the guest. We physically pull the guest out of the host molecule and we estimate the, the free energy cost of applying these restraints. And <clears throat> that's also done with a, a Python program called Paprika developed in Gilson lab. Um, and this, was, uh, this method was used to benchmark the Smirnoff 99 frost uh, for, which is a precursor to uh, parsley and sage. And we show that this is um, 
a, a robust method to estimate the binding free energy for the um, post gas systems. So it's a bit about the, the Taproom database uh, curated about 100, uh, 126 post gas complexes uh, that comprises of cyclodextrins, cucurbitrols, and octo acids. Uh, most of these were curated from the sample blind challenges. Um, and the gas molecules range from uh, simple cyclic alcohols, carboxylate acids to drug like molecules. And I've hand selected 36 uh, of these complexes as the training method that uh, training, training set. And we've um, made this available online at, on GitHub. Um, so to test this, we use the uh, OpenFF Sage 2.0.0 as the force field. The partial charges we use AM1 BCC of 10 using the OpenEye toolkit. And for the generalized born inclusive solvent, we just selected the OBC2 model. So without getting too much into details, the, the generalized born inclusive solvent treats each atom as a van der Waals sphere embedded in a um, continuum medium. Uh, yep, continuum medium. So the larger the radius, the less solvated the atom becomes, and the smaller the radius, the more uh, solvated the atom becomes. Um, so for the radii, we, as the initial values, we use the M Bondi 2 radii set. So basically, uh, this is, this is a, a five atom type um, base. Uh, the four of them are the elements, so hydrogen, carbon, nitrogen, and oxygen, and with an extra type for a hydrogen atom um, down to a nitrogen atom. And <clears throat> we want to optimize all five of these, these uh, radii. Okay, so with that said, oh, just a reference. Uh, this is a comparison of running the simulation in, in OpenMM on the RTX 3090. With implicit solvent, we get about two market seconds a day. With explicit solvent, with about 3,000 water molecules, it, we're getting 600 nanoseconds a day. So we're getting uh, three times, a factor of three times faster. So these are the, um, the estimated binding free energies uh, with the original radio with SAGE. And what we see here is that um, the um, calculations overestimate the binding free energies uh, compared to experiment, especially for the cucurbitrols. So for the cucurbitrols, we're getting about minus 50 kK. Um, I tested this with explicit self in the same protocol, and we also get an overbinding. But with uh, explicit solvent, we're getting about minus 20 to minus 30. So it's still getting um, uh, overbinding with, with explicit water as well. Now we fit this into force balance, and force balance converge after 21 iterations, and we get a, a big improvement in the binding free energies. So the RMS E dropped from about 21 kcal to about 3. Uh, but we do see the R squared um, deteriorate a bit. So from 0.7 to about 0.5. So this is, this is uh, the results for the training set. For the test set, we see the same thing with the original radii. We see um, an overestimation of the binding free energy for cucurbitrols. Now, when um, we use the uh, host gas optimized radii from the previous slide, we get a much better result. So what we see is that uh, the armor C dropped to about 1.8 kcal 1 1 kk per mole, and the R squared uh, increased to about 0.85. So what we see is that the optimized radii perform better on a test set than on a training set. Now, if we look at what changed in terms of the parameters, I'm showing you the GB radii before and after optimization. So most of it, are three of them are uh, minor changes, and the biggest change is with hydrogen and nitrogen. Um, so nitrogen dropped from 1.55 angstrom to about 0.53 angstrom. This is very unphysical, but if you look at the uh, results again, so most of the host gas complex that contains a nitrogen atom are the cucurbitrols. And since the, those are the most uh, uh, overbinding results, uh, these systems um, are, is what driving the optimization. Um, <clears throat> okay, so even though it's very unphysical, let's see how it, how well it works on a 
on the benchmark on a protein ligand system. So um, for the test case, I, I chose um, the benchmark set from Elive et al, which was published last year. So he made the he kindly made these available online. There are 59 protein ligand systems in total. And the delta Gs range from about minus 2.7 to about minus uh, 12.6 kcal per mole. And as a reference, <coughs> running these in OpenMM, with implicit solvent, we get about 900 nanoseconds uh, and explicit about half of that. Um, so just a bit about the calculations, the absolute binding free age calculations. Uh, we use double decoupling method here. Uh, uh, we ran it in OpenMM and OpenMM tools. Uh, for the electrostatic part, we scale the parcel charges and the GBSA term simultaneously. Uh, <laughs> split it over 11 windows for this uh, at the binding side and the bulk. And for the lander journals, we use the uh, we decouple it with a soft core potential over 21 windows. Okay. So as reference, I, I replotted the results from Alibe et al. Um, oh, forgot to say. So the results I'm gonna show you is with the Amber for uh, FF99SB uh, LDN force field. We've also done the calculations with FF14SB, but uh, we get similar results. So these are the explicit solvent results from Alibe Ifran and Alibe et al. Uh, with GAF two and tip three P. And we see that there is a nice correlation, even though it's, it's a bit uh, offset by, by, by three K hell. Now for comparison, I also did the calculation with GAF two, but with the OBC two, a piece of solvent. And what we see here is that um, it is, it does get slightly worse compared to the explicit solvent, but from tip three P to OBC two, but you still see that there is some linear correlations, even though there's a, a lar larger scatter. <clears throat> now, we also see the same thing with SAGE, uh, where the RMSC, I think it's about double uh, than the explicit solvent with a R squared of a half. When we use the optimized radii, optimized to the 36 host gas complex, we see an improvement in the RMSC, but the R squared actually gets worse. So we still not entirely sure why this is. Uh, so we need to investigate this further. I suspect it's got to do with the protein stability. Um, when we reduce the GB radio of the nitrogen added to about uh, half an extra. Um, <clears throat> as a final benchmark, uh, we wanna see how well the, the optimized radio transferred to hydration free energies. So I selected on 100 molecules from the free solve database and only selected molecules that only contains hydrogen, carbon, nitrogen, and oxygen. Uh, I ran this in the uh, through YAC, um, the YAC uh, through the open effect evaluator. Similar procedure for the electrostatic and Lana Jones to the protein ligand calculations. And each window we ran it for two to nine seconds production run. So, uh, as reference, I plotted the results from David Mobley's lab for GAF, uh, GAF 1.7, I believe, with T3P for the 100 molecules that I selected. So with GAF and T3P, we get uh, RMSC about 1.7 and R schedule 0.86. Um, for comparison, I, I did the calculation with SAGE as well, SAGE with T3P. And for the same uh, 100 molecules, SAGE performs slightly better than GAF 1.7. Uh, and now, <clears throat> when we switch the implicit solvent, SAGE performs just as good um, as the explicit solvent part. The RMSC just increased a bit from about uh, from 1.5 kcal to about 2 kcal, but it retains the, uh, the correlation with experiments. Um, but when we use the host gas optimized radii, this is what we get. We see that the host gas optimized radii deteriorates the uh, hydration free energies. And looking at the outliers, these are the molecules containing hydrogen atoms. 
remember, uh, it dropped from 1.55 to 0.52. Um, so as I, I wanted to look into this further. So I did a uh, separate um, optimization. I selected these two systems for the hydration for energies. I selected methyl hexanoic. And for the host gas, I selected beta socket action and hexanoic acid. And I just want to optimize one radiant instead of all five. I chose the oxygen in this case. So initially, the hydrogen free energy is overestimated. And in order for, for it to get too closer to the experiment, what force balance did was increase the GB radiant from 1.5 to about 1.6. Now for post gas binding, initially it is overestimated and to get to the experimental line, force balance needed to decrease the radius from 1.5 to about 1.1. When I include both of them in the optimization, we uh, include both hydration for energy and uh, host gas binding, we, we don't see any convergence. It, it doesn't get any closer to the experimental line. And on the top right here, you see the objective function. It's not going down at all. So what we see here is we can either get, and it puts a solvent um, parameters that can describe hydration for energies correctly, but not post gas binding or vice versa. Uh, the, uh, vice versa. Um, so just to summarize for the host gas systems. So we have this infrastructure in place and we can actually optimize uh, force field parameters. In this case, uh, um, <coughs> optimize the GB radia, and we show that it gives good results for the test case, better than the training set. Uh, when we apply it to protein ligand systems, it did improve the RMSC, but made the correlation worse a bit. For hydration for energies, it totally went the other way. Uh, it's just no good. And when I try to optimize to both of them, the force balance just can't find a good um, uh, parameters that can fit to both of them. Uh, so what's next? I think I need to look at other types of host molecules to diversify the train set. And we also wanna see how well it transfers to other host molecule types. Uh, we're looking at optimizing other parameters besides the GB radii. Um, and we are also looking at splitting atom types um, just to see if we can get away from this um, unphysical small radius for nitrogen atoms. Um, we are also currently working on uh, modifying the OBC2 model with the Smirnoff plugin, but if that doesn't work, we, we will try a different uh, impulse solvent model. Uh, finally, we also want to test. Um, optimizing the Leonard Jones parameters with explicit solvent. And hopefully we can integrate uh, host gas binding data into future of NFF um, release. So with that, I'd like to acknowledge uh, people in the Gilson lab and open a force field without which uh, this project won't be possible, especially Simon Withroy um, and the NIH funding and San Diego Supercomputer Center for um, resource, resources. And with that, uh, thank you for listening to my talk.